Hello friends, welcome to the Butterfly Path. My name is Lucia Radetsky and I am a Christian health coach. Today sharing with you a very important topic. We are breaking the curse of patriarchy, all right? And before you start panicking out there, because I know this is gonna bring me all the Pharisees right on my neck, <laughs> let me tell you that I am gonna work completely out of scripture, okay? I'm not gonna say anything on my own. I have been taking several, several um, hours and, and some days reflecting about the Word of God, and um, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I have come out to this um, understanding. And I am open for, you know, whatever you would like to also share in terms of your own understanding uh, of what I'm going to be um, offering to you as an interpretation of what is the will of God regarding uh, women, right? And regarding the curse that has been done over women, the curse of patriarchy. So we're going to start today reading from Genesis, and we're going to end up all the way um, at the, you know, taking a look at the behavior of Jesus Christ with women. And so I hope that this is going to bring some, um, some questions for you and ultimately be food for thought, right? Because we've been know, we believe in this channel very much that uh, our food is to do the will of God, our food is the word of God first. So, um, yeah. So before we start, I'm going to pray today. I would like to pray today with you in agreement if you want to pray with me. Um, and I want to say, dear Father, thank you. Thank you for forgiving our sins. We're praying that you accept our repentant heart today. And we're coming in humility, Lord. We're coming to pray for all of those women that are lost, all of those women that have been taken over the spirit of rebellion uh, by wounds due to wounds and legal rights, Lord. I pray in this hour that you will set them free, set free all the captives that are in this hour still harboring resentment towards someone that has wounded them. And I pray, Lord, that everybody that is um, in a situation of violence right now, every female, every girl that is experiencing violence, Lord, that is being wounded by patriarchy, that they will be set free, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that they will be set free and covered by the blood of the Lamb today. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love, kindness, your faithfulness. We are standing here in prayer, and I pray that this particular video that we're coming out with today will be of help for men and women to become more united, more merciful, and more um, humble by listening to your word and understanding what is your will, God. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. I, I feel so good after praying, and I like praying for hours. I, I am a prayer fan. <laughs> I can be, I can be, pray, I pray in the night, in the morning, in the evening, and, you know, I just, I just live by prayer more than by food. So the topic today is very important for me. Why? Because I believe this is going to help many women get saved, and it's going to help many men too, because men might be doing some things um, without an understanding of how um, the Word of God works. You know, many people might be following things that they read on Genesis or that they read on, you know, they will allow in the Old Testament and trying to apply them to, to this, this actuality without understanding that Jesus is the curse breaker. Jesus came to defy or, or more than defy, to fulfill actually um, the law uh, in love in faith and in love and salvation. So don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, confirm you all of this in scripture. So I'm not just saying, I'm gonna go one by one. So let's go. We're gonna start today with, um, we're gonna start with Genesis and we're gonna start with what? What's the issue? Like, what are we fighting you guys? Why are we so angry at each other? <laughs> right, because um, we, can't, we can't help it. There's a grudge. And the Lord has sent me to, to reflect on this, right? I have felt from the Holy Spirit the need to talk about this. Because why? A house divided cannot stand. 
So we are the body of Christ. We cannot stand if we keep holding on to bridges that the Lord has came to reconcile us. Huh? So we are unbelieving in the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ when we keep thinking that the woman should be cursed forever under the yoke of patriarchy bound over sin. Hmm? Pay attention to this. So, first grudge. This is going to take us to Genesis, and this is going to take us to the chapter 2, the verse 16. So the, fir the ver first thing that I wanted to um, put out there for reflection for us, for put for thought, right, is that um, we tend to believe that the original sin is sexual sin, right? And sexual immorality, for sure, is a huge bummer. It's a big problem in our life. I get it. I'm not saying it's not. But if you read in the chapter 2, the verse 16, let's go there. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you might freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. So this was before he made the woman as a helper for him, right? So now the problem is that we tend to believe that the temptation of Eve Eating the apple, eating, sorry, not the apple, the fruit of the, the, the tree of um, good and evil knowledge. It's about sexuality, when it actually is not. Sexuality, it was part of God's design. I'm not talking about sexual immorality. I'm talking about sexuality in itself. It is divine. It's sacred. Part of God's design for the union of Adam and Eve. Sacred intimacy, sacred love, and sexuality. Hmm? So, there is no third party here. There is no other man that tempted Eve. There is no other woman that tempted Adam in this, in this time. So, the idea that the original sin is sexual, um, I think we need to reconsider. Uh-huh. Yes. And, yeah, I'm going to address other things. So, wait, take a deep breath. <laughs> I know this is hard for you guys. And I know this is hard for you girls too. So let's take a deep breath and keep going. So um, then the, the snake comes. And the Lord showed me something, the Holy Spirit. I was driving. I drive many hours. Um, and I was driving and reflecting over Genesis, listening to a podcast, the scripture, and reflecting like the snake. Then I am... Uh, a big admirer of the deliverance ministries. I think that they're very important and they, they're part of the big commission, the great commission that the Lord gave us. And so I'm thinking about the snake and it comes to my mind the idea of Python spear and the idea of um, what Python spear does for the ones of you that are already a little bit, you know, you, you, you kind of follow the layers of the Bible that talk about deliverance, then you're gonna understand that Python spirit had to do with deception, with lies, and it has to do with um, it has to do with marine kingdom, which is related with witchcraft, the occult, and knowledge, but in a bad way, right? And here's the thing: it's on the house, the marine kingdom, of who? Leviathan. Leviathan, which is pride. It's the ruler of pride. So, Python's spirit, the snake, which the Lord had gave us authority to trample against it or among it, right? Later on in the Bible. It is the spirit of rebellion against God. It's the spirit of disobedience. It's not the spirit. It's not about sexual carnality. And I'm not saying with this that that's okay, that, you know, sexual immorality. Yeah, let's let that out of the table, guys. We're talking about the original sin. It is not sexual sin, but it is pride. The original sin is rebellious. It is disobedience to the will of God. That is the original sin. 
That is what originally cursed women, women into patriarchy. Now, let's read about this. In the chapter 3, the verse 4, it says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. It's lying, right? It's lying. And so it says, And he's defying God's commandment. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And here's, here's the key, guys. You will be like God, right? So the snake is trying to tempt Eve into believing that she can be equal with God. And that's the part where we need to understand that Eve at that moment needed deliverance from the spirit of pride. She was being tempted by power, not by sexuality, but by power, by, by having the spirit of pride, by having the spirit of um, being unsubordinated, being rebellious against God and trying to think, you know, I know better. And that is why the curse of patriarchy shows up a little later. And we're going to see it here. In, in the um, chapter 3, the verse 15, it says, the, the Lord figures out what they did, right? They're both blaming someone else. Adam is blaming the woman and even God, because he says, the woman you gave me. So <laughs> Adam is trying to not take any accountability. He's saying, no, not my fault. It's not my fault. It's her, right? When he should have been more wise. And, and the woman, it's also saying, that the serpent deceived her, right? And also not taking any accountability. So both of them are not in a repentant heart. Both of them are coming from a place that does not take any accountability. And now here's the thing. The Lord says, I will put an enmity between you and the woman. He's talking about the snake. He's talking about lie, for, lie um, lying lips and deception witchcraft, occult, all that, and amnesty, right? And between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel, right? So all of this is very, very interesting. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, right? We are seeing something that is beautiful, gorgeous, which is childbearing and becoming painful. Hmm? which I'm going to talk about this before, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> later on, because um, it's not always the case. Thanks to the sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ had done, it's not always sorrowful. So let's, let's, let's keep going. So it says, In pay you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Now, stop. Freeze. What this means? The, he shall rule over you. This is the curse, right? Because your desire be on your husband is a good thing. That's that's how it is, right? That's how we are meant to be. Flesh, one flesh, right? We're meant to be. We are made for one man. And man, it's to be held or hold by his wife, right? So... The thing is, and not every man, we know that men and women also can stay single and follow God. And that's also very much part of God's plan. So for, for the ones that do feel that desire to get married, that feel um, the, the right, the sexual right to get married, find their, their husband, right? They are according to Genesis, according to the law, under this curse of patriarchy, which brings what? A desire of domination, possession, and a desire of uh, control over the woman. And the woman, um, it's having to accept this. This is the law again, right? Now, this has brought a lot, a lot of pain and a lot of sorrow in the life of women. We have noticed that um, because a lot of men hold on to this scripture as a way to justify abusive behavior and as a way to justify 
um, patriarchy and, and behaviors that are actually not in agreement with the greatest commandment, which is love one another, right? So we're going to notice that Jesus Christ actually did a change on this. He came to fulfill the law in love. And we're going to go all the way there. Don't worry. But first, I want to also let you know that originally that was not the plan of God. That was a curse. And a curse can be broken by God himself. God is the, the curse breaker. Jesus is a curse breaker. So here's the thing. Originally, let's go back to here. The Lord said in the chapter 2, the verse 18, It is not good that men should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So there is not such a thing of a helper that is like lame or like dumb or like less than. It's not saying that. When he's saying in the course that, your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. He's talking about desire. He's talking about um, like, like sexual desire. And he's talking about the man ruling over her with possessiveness, with like um, controlling behavior, right? That's a curse. Now, the thing is that um, originally she was meant to be a helper. Now, when you understand helper, many men, and I have here in the church, so don't tell me you don't do that. I know some men will take this as, oh, my servant, right? And yes, we are, we are servants, and it's great to serve. Um, men and women equally are being called to serve. As Jesus said, the one who be, wants to be greatest among you should be a servant of all. So we are all called to serve. I'm not speaking evil about service. Service is very much what we should be focusing on every day. But hear me out here. The comparable helper, I want to take you to Luke, the chapter 10, the verse 38, to take a look at, um, let me find Luke, he's here, to take a look at what it, how, how Jesus, when he came to this earth, understood what a woman should be doing. Because then, you know, the first thing that a man thinks is, ah, a woman is a helper, she's going to do dishes and like, you know, clean up the house and that's her place, period. Sure. Look at this. Look, chapter 10, verse 38. Mary and Martha worship and serve. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Okay. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. For Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, listen, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. And this is key, my friends, because many times uh, I have heard men in church trying to harbor like the ideas that the women are just meant to serve and do the work and clean up in the kitchen. That's not what Jesus said. Sorry, guys. It's in, it's in red. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but it's in red. It's saying right here that um, she's doing a good thing by listening to the word of God and by studying and worshiping and letting service, like attending household things for a man, to work on understanding the word of God. And he saw that as a good thing. And she was sitting with all the other people. Hmm? So, let me see. In Luke, the chapter 11, the verse 14, we're going to see another, another example of why it's so important that we get rid of this idea of the curse still governing over couples, over married couples, and over 
society between the, the or relationship between men and women. So this is saying a house divided cannot stand, right? So if we're fighting inside the household for power, that's not going to work. So this is important. And it says, and he was casting out a demon at the, and it was mute. This is Luke chapter 11, verse 14. It was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that, he, that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. This is interesting because this has another interpretation for the ones that like the layers of the Bible. The mute can be also talking about those who cannot defend themselves, those who cannot speak up, oppressed people. Some of the, and please let me in the comments, what are your thoughts? If you are a person who likes to study in depth the Bible, I would love to hear your thoughts. I am not, I am no one here. I'm just, you know, following directions. So I am happy to hear, uh, but I do not read the, the Bible just literally. I try to go through um, in depth as the Holy Spirit has been guiding me. So it says, but some of them said he cast out demons by Belzebub, the ruler of the demons, and others testing him south from him as sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. Hmm? And it keeps it keeps going, and I, I am I would love if you can read this whole verse because it's really cool. And the chapter eleven, the verse fourteen. Because it keeps going, and, and it's talking mostly about cast, casting out demons. But you can also understand how Jesus, again and again and again, is talking about breaking curses and, and doing the will of God, the will of his Father. Right? He is God. He's coming to share the will of God and coming to break curses and, and cast out demons. And the snake, it's a demon, the snake. Hmm? So... It says here, when uh, in the chapter 22 of the verse, sorry, chapter 11 of the, ver the verse 22, when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, it's talking about the demon, the demon, the curse, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. Hmm? And then we can keep going in, in Luke. And it says in the chapter 11, the verse 28, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. All right, let's keep going. That was a little, a little treat. <laughs> so this is, this is my, my, argument guys about why jesus is the curse breaker and he came to redeem woman and i'm gonna keep going he came to redeem woman from the curse he did that not just for women but for, for everyone listen to this guys if you don't believe in my words don't believe in me but believe in the words of my father that are here in red or father or lord jesus christ say it so you if you are not believing in his word then that's, that's up to you. So Luke chapter 4, verse 18, when Jesus is rejected at Nazareth. Listen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Open your ears if you have them. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and to recover of the sight of the blind and to set at liberty those set at liberty those who are oppressed. Deep breath to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So we're hearing here to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's, there's so much, there's so much in the world. There's so much in the world. Um, let's keep going now. Let's see, we have, 
just because um, I, I got caught in our way of our Lord. And oh, yeah, let me give you four examples. Um, there's more, but I'm going to give you four. Four examples of what is the attitude of Jesus Christ towards women that were condemned by the law, right? When Jesus Christ came and shares that, that he comes to fulfill the law in love, he died for our sins. And that includes women. He died for the woman of sin. He died for Eve. Do you understand that? He died for Eve. So you guys, listen. Of course, not only for Eve, but also for Eve. And um, let's let's go to the. I'm only talking about canonic gospel, so you you can't even argue with me about this. There was many many women in the Bible that had been important supporters of the ministry of Jesus Christ. I'm going to go through some of them later, but first I would love to share with you about the compassion and the mercy that Jesus had shown towards women, even towards sinners. Let's start for the example. In Luke 7, chapter 7, verse 36, we see the example of the woman, the sinner, the sinner forgiven, right? The woman that is using the costly oil to wash Jesus' feet. And then Simon, the Pharisee, is going to come. It's going to be like, meh, meh, you 